What's up, guys? Of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi Fi battle with yours truly, of course, the Scarander. And yeah, today we're going up against a guy named Friskadisk, and this was a battle I had on my stream where he won the whole year battle by insisting on using my RU team. And I actually reached out throughout the stream that I wanted uh, not higher than RU, but he insisted, and uh, really now um, I thought I'd t I take the challenge as it is. And he has a mixture of. Um, you Pokemons and actually lower as in you, so it's actually a very, very balanced mixed here team. And the biggest threat in his team, or really the only big threat in general, is actually his uh, Lupani. Uh, Lupani outspeeds all of my team here with 135 base. So basically, what I need to happen is either hurt it with a close combat with Brisian. I know that the live for close combat actually one hit KO it, uh, did his calcs before going into this battle. So that was really the only thing I had to keep in mind. And uh, basically, it makes sure that he wasn't paralyzed by the Murkrow. And I'm gonna start with Jolteon here because Jolteon is able to outspeed everything in his team and hit something hard. Now, I need to preserve Jolteon to the best of my ability. And if my or if his Lupin do may evolve, I need to go for a Trick Room uh, with um, Aromatis and basically go for close combat through there. Uh, but of course, I'm gonna expect him to have fake out on the Lupin here, and that could be a big deal. And um, yeah, that's really all. There is to it. I really need Jolteon to be healthy and to be able to deal with the Murkrow, Sigilyph, and Skarmory, and Empoleon. And that should be the trick here. So, really, wait, all this, my guys. Let's go. So, I am a bit lucky here because we're actually gonna start with the Sigilyph. And uh, as long as this Sigilyph isn't specially defensive, there is no way he can take this kind of pressure from Jolteon. So, I was definitely suspecting him to be. Um, since I go for Protect here, I was definitely suspecting him to be defensively built here, and that did scare me a bit. It really did. Uh, I couldn't really do a lot to it, so I'm gonna go for Volt Switch. Uh, I don't wanna risk getting damage here on me, but it is actually enough to take him out, which tells me that it is a sweeper based one with Flame Orb, and uh, yeah, that's definitely unique. I'd mostly I see with Life Orb, uh, so it definitely risks that going down, so that was really tough for him. So I'm gonna go to my, um, of course, the master that is this guy, and uh, Jellfox can do a whole lot of things here, but since Murkrow come in, I do expect him, of course, to go for T-Wave to shutting that thing down, and I can't risk that, and he actually pulls a double on me, predicting something like that to happen, I'm gonna go to Black Rose, which is the Roserade, and now, Roserade isn't necessarily a tough Pokemon, but um, I need to deal with it in a fashion, that uh, makes sure that nothing takes real a lot of damage from this thing, and it's being specially defensive. Um, or he's actually, sorry, he's actually somewhat defensive overall. So even if I bring Mantine here, it's gonna go for Sleep Powder. And I was like, oh no, really? Sleep Powder? I guess that's a thing. Uh, I don't me go up against Rose Rage too often, it's gonna show me the Toxic Spikes. So that makes things even worse, because that means things get badly poisoned. But that also means that now I know that he can't go for another layer of uh, Toxic Spy or Sleep because every Pokemon that comes in will be Toxic. And that's important to know because I can get a major momentum out of that. And I do actually wake up here and I'm gonna go for Ear Slash, of course not doing any damage whatsoever. And um, I should probably switch out there. I decided to stay in because Mantine is not really... It's not that well used this battle and he's gonna go for Ice Beam, of course hitting me neutrally. Uh, while it doesn't do a whole lot of damage, my Scald does do much less. And this is basically a stall out. I, like I said, I should have switched out. I really should have. But I didn't want to risk the damage on any other pokes. I basically went for flinches and Scald Burns. Like, any of those would be just fine. Uh, at least score Scald Burn would, would, have, would have been much better. It really would have. But, um, as you guys see, the Empoleon will win this matchup because I only do resistant damage to it. I decided to go for Protect in hopes of uh, getting some leftover recovery, really. Um, not the, you know, I'm not gonna lie here, it's really not that smooth of a decision for me of actually pulling something like that off. Uh, so finally gonna go for a Skull, hoping for at least a burn this time. But no, of course not. So the Hax is definitely not in my favor here, and uh, the Mantine is, well, it can take another Ice Beam, even with leftover recovery. I won't be able to do so, so I'm basically just gonna go for some last effort damage really and basically fall to the ice beam. But like I said, I have no real switching into this and um, I just I couldn't risk um, 
getting damage on Jolt or anything like that, because they are fragile after all. At least now Krista can come in and uh, a flamethrower should be just about enough to actually kill it, because of course the power within this Pokemon. So I go for flamethrower and that is Empoleon out of the way. Uh, I know it sounds strange that I did, did do this play, but it was either that or um, bringing Jolteon go for a bull switch, getting life or damage on me and then make him go for the Rose Raid. Now, I am a bit unlucky here, and um, I actually decided to switch out, predicting his fake out. So he gets the free Mega Evolution, yes. But at the same time, I do a play that is very, very questionable. And looking back in this battle, I should not have done this. At least not now. It was too early to pull a stunt like this off. Because I didn't really think about him having the Skarmory around. So, I go for Mega Evolution. The fake out will really not do a whole lot of damage. But I decided to go for a Trick Room here. And like I said, I should not have done that. I really shouldn't. I thought Steelix could sweep from this range and hurt everything he seemed really badly. But with Skarmory in Bond, it, I actually have issues. And I didn't even, you know, question that play from the beginning. Uh, so sadly now, this Trick Room is more likely to screw myself over than screwing him over. Um, and I have to switch out. I'm basically gonna bring Steelix here, predicting some kind of hazard. Um, and um, this is really not the worst part. I'm gonna actually speed this up a little bit. Because while well, I do switch out to the Steelix, like I said there, they are, the, the main issue and the one that really stands out is that he will of course go for Stealth Rocks. I'll do the same even though I get my Mega Evolution. But... Um, yeah, I mean, I went for a Dragon Tail here, and Dragon Tail is um, actually lower prioritized than Whirlwind, so I'll be forced to switch out to my Jolteon, and I didn't want to risk the unnecessary damage here, so I decided to switch back into Steelix, thinking that he will go for Brave Bird or anything like that, since the Trick Room were up, so I couldn't really attack him. And, uh, you know, while that's a smart play, and, you know, everything in it is fine, uh, he will just keep going for Whirlwinds, and what makes that even worse is that Jolteon is so eager to battle, so eager to do this like damage output, that he is whittled down by just switchings. And I'm gonna go for Volt Switch here, predicting him to just keep going for the Whirlwind. So, like I said, I have really nothing for it, and I just have to accept it, and I really need to reserve my Jolteon to the best of my abilities here, to when it's really mattering. So I'm gonna bring Steelix yet again, and um, he's gonna get again go for a Whirlwind. And what do you know, who comes in? Jolteon! Fucking Jolteon! It's gotta keep coming! And um, the worst part is, of course, that they actually lose to Poison and Hazards alone. So I lose Jolteon here. And Jolteon, like I said, was a major player for me here. And it going down... Fucking sucks. Fucking sucks. Um, so I can go to Krista this time. And uh, <laughs> like I said there, I was really frustrated about that. Because Jolteon could have been a game changer. And... Um, I'm now bound to actually only pull the Varician switch, which I actually was talking about before. And um, luckily for me, he did pull up the Toxic Spike because having T waves and Toxic Spikes is gonna hinder him quite a lot. And I decided here to actually sack Delphox, if I remember correctly, because really now, because of uh, the damage output and the switchings on Delphox, it's not gonna help me whatsoever. He's already mega evolved. So I really need to kind of store my power for something else. I can't rely on speed now anyway to actually win. I need to rely on my own bulk and my Vrishion to pull this off. And like I said, I can't do anything to this guy. So I'm just going to bring yet again my um, <laughs> my uh, Aromatis. And I decided here to go for um, Moonblast, hoping that he would attack me actually. Uh, sadly, he goes to the Black Rose. Uh, that seems to be his main response. I should probably have been better off with a Wish here. Uh, to be honest, so I went for Moonblast, and like you see here, guys, it will not do a whole lot of damage. And I'm fair potential of the Sludge Bomb. And if he has a Sludge Bomb, I'm basically just going to uh, get a Wish up and then fall and uh, get something else to get the Wish. And like I said, I really needed my uh, Aromatis for Trick Room because my only win condition now is Trick Room Verision. That's the only thing I got. So I'm gonna switch out to Steelix, hoping for a Sludge Bomb, of course. And he actually goes for Giga Rain. And that was really bad, because I was basically face-palming here, because while it's the 2 with KO, it is one of those situations where Steelix should not have been taking this kind of damage, and because it's immune to the Toxic, he's actually gonna press both for Sleep Powder, and that made it even worse. I was... Ah, I, I just... I really hate this kind of situations where I'm getting... 
I'm getting walled out, I really am, and it's super frustrating. So I got this side over Rissian here, basically spreading him out, expecting him to go for another layer or for another layer of Toxic. It's either that or um, Giga Drain. He went for Giga Drain, luckily, and uh, really, like I said, there had he gone for another layer of spikes. Now all my Pokémon are poisoned, so those Toxic spikes wouldn't have helped him. So I thought that that was my best play, actually. And uh, I'm gonna decide to go for a Sword Stance, predicting him to, of course, uh, bring in the Murkrow. And um, that was actually kind of fine. As of right now, I am immune to the Thunder Wave, which is super important, of course. And I was really glad he didn't bring the, <laughs> the Loop Honey, because that meant that I still had a small chance. And I say small, I should definitely, you know, thinking back at this battle, had I been Scarfed, I would have actually sold a lot of issues, but I wouldn't have been able to take it out the loop on him, to be honest. So then we're gonna go close to combat, basically I need this thing dead, like, that is dealt with. That was really all I had in my thought process, but what I really should have done is gone for Aromatisse and go for a Wish. Uh, I gotta mention that too often, I guess, but uh, I think that was a smarter play. Now, with all that damage, I am questioning whether or not I can actually deal with the loop on him. Uh, felt that you know I'm probably not in the best position as of right now, but I'm gonna decide to sack off Steelix here because um, Steelix can take the fake out. That's like the most important part, but uh, it's a sleep after all. And even the retaliation, if it would have been able to live a hit, uh, it would still not be enough, sadly. So I was actually hoping for him having high jump kick uh, because had he had high jump kick, I would actually have um, or he would probably not have gone for high jump kick against Maromatis anyway. But I thought that that could have been a play too, and um, I could get some left with recover out of it. But sadly, I am poisoned after all, so that's gonna screw things over. So anyway, I expect him here to try to go for returns. So I'm just gonna go for a trick room because I really wanted to damage here, and here and now, basically. And um, he's sadly gonna switch out and preserve that fake out. So what it's all gonna come down to is because I do have Psy Shock in this Pokemon, so I need. The Psy Shock to one it KO this guy, so really, really, I would have been able to do so here because it, if it isn't defensive, then this is a one it KO because I am invested in a special attack after all. So I was backing on that to happen because the Moonblast did nothing, which meant that it probably isn't defensive whatsoever. <sighs> but guys, sadly, it is has defense investment. And of course, the Giga Rain will do a bit too much. And what makes that even worse is that. While I will with leftovers live this onslaught, which is great, it still means that um, I will fall to the, to the poison after this turns, turn of events. And that really sucks, it does, because it comes down to the last matchup, which is actually gonna be the Brissian against the Loop Honey. And due to me having taken too much damage on the Brissian already, I'm not able to actually survive the onslaught of, of course, fake out and poison damage. Hell. Even with Stealth Rust and Bond, it's not very likely I can even take a fake out. And I did some calcs after this just to see how much a fake out does. And it actually does at minimum at 62 HP here. So I'm done for. Too bad. Uh, I really, really, I thought I did all the right stops here. I really did. But sadly, I can't take the fake out. I, was, I could have hoped that he didn't go for the safe play of being fake out. But my opponent really, is not taking any risk after that trick room came up. And. Uh, yeah, it really sucks. It really does. Um, my opponent plays a good game. It, it's not that. I mean, he was the world winner after all. But me pulling all, you know, the right stops at the end really, really makes this loss kind of painful, to be honest. Because really, if you think about the game, you know, going back at it, it was my trick room that made sure my Jolteon went down. And that was actually me misplaying a very, very big deal. Uh, I lost damage to Steelix, I lost damage to, like I said, Jolteon, and I was forced to lose damage to Rissian because of that play. All I really needed was to stay in with Jolteon and uh, my Gel Fox and do the right amount of damage to the Skarmory, and it wouldn't have been such a big deal. Uh, so it's, like I said, it sucks. It actually does, because I did, I was the better play, I did the better plays at the end. But when I did those plays, it was it was too late. Um, I already screwed up enough to lose this battle, and I lose to a player that didn't really have to risk too much to win this battle, and it sucks. Um, like I said, it's not. I'm not trying to take away the victory. It just 
what I'm trying to say is that I helped him secure his victory when I could have just as well sealed the deal with those plays at the end with the right kind of environment, but I just... That prick room play in the mid-game was the actually the, the winning factor for him, which makes me so mad. <laughs> I was really hoping I could win this one, because I really like beating OU teams with a lower tier team, and sometimes it works, most times it doesn't, and this of course is one of those times where I was so close. I was so close to pulling this off, but no, I just, I just didn't do it. I just screw myself over, and uh, that's why I'm so salty about this loss. I wouldn't have mind the loss, like I said, if uh, if he actually overpowered me. But this is one of those instances where I helped him change the course of this battle, and it sucks. <laughs> it actually, it really sucks. Uh, but anyway, guys, I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this battle. Um, I'm actually going to upload another battle with him that I had today, which was just as interesting. Um, and also, Frisky Disc, thank you for that battle, GD Man. And uh, yeah. You know, make sure to leave a like and all that jazz, right? Remember, sky's the limit. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care. Bye.